The Seymour family in Tudor England were incredibly powerful, especially with Edward Seymour, the first Duke of Somerset, acting as Lord Protector of England during the reign of young King Edward VI, Henry VIII's son. The Seymours have a long link to the monarchy, especially with Jane being the ill-fated third wife of Henry VIII, who sadly died in childbirth. Today we're going to look at Thomas Seymour, who gained a rather notorious reputation throughout the Tudor period, and we will look at his downfall and execution, which came around under strange circumstances. So join us today as we look at the execution of Thomas Seymour, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Thomas Seymour was a younger brother of Edward, who later became the Lord Protector. Henry VIII's second wife Anne Boleyn was struggling to have a son, and provide the king with a male heir, so his attention turned to Jane Seymour, Thomas's sister. Henry married Jane shortly after Anne's execution in May 1536, and with this the fortunes of the Seymour brothers rose drastically as they became part of the royal family. When Jane gave birth to a son Edward, Henry was made up, however she later died shortly after from complications from the birth. Thomas Seymour in 1538 was sent to become an ambassador at the French court, and at this time he was tasked with meeting Anne of Cleves, who would later become Henry VIII's fourth wife. They met at Calais on the 13th of December 1539, and later he was tasked on another important diplomatic mission, meeting King Ferdinand I of Hungary, to ask his support for Henry, with conflicts against the Scots and the French. He settled in Vienna for a couple of years, and was later an ambassador inside the Habsburg court. With war on the horizon, he was made a marshal of the English army in the Netherlands, being second in command. He was a rather good military leader in July 1543, for example he captured and destroyed a number of different castles near to Boulogne. Although his sister had died, Thomas Seymour was known to have been still in beneficiary of much wealth and reward from the king, as he was the uncle to Edward VI, the successor to Henry. Thomas Seymour returned to court shortly before King Henry VIII died in January 1547. When the King died, he left Catherine Parr one of the wealthiest women in England, and a Regency Council was established to rule on behalf of the boy King, Edward VI. Thomas Seymour became known as the first Baron Seymour of Suddeley, with his brother being named the Lord Protector. His brother rose to prominence, but during this time politics was an incredibly dangerous business, especially as the English Reformation was being carried out across the country. Thomas's brother Edward became the Lord Protector, which basically allowed him to rule over the country for his nephew, Edward VI. As with most siblings, jealousy was inevitable, especially as Edward gained this position. Thomas began to dislike his brother, and their relationship broke down. He began to become obsessed with his brother's power, and he began to work hard to oust his brother from his position. The resentment especially felt from Thomas was clear to see, but he thought to outdo his brother's position, he could in a sense marry into the royal family, thus usurping his brother. He was linked to Mary Howard, however had also shown an interest in marrying Henry VIII's daughters, Mary or Elizabeth. Shortly after Henry's death however, Thomas had begun to rekindle an affair he once had with the former king's sixth wife, Catherine Parr. Previously they had a relationship, but they were then married in April or May 1547, which many believed to be too soon after Henry's death. Because of this, many people at court began to turn against the couple. Catherine, as the king's stepmother, had expected to become regent, however was furious with the appointment of Edward Seymour, so husband and wife both had a mutual dislike for the Duke of Somerset. Following their marriage, the couple moved in together, and Catherine Parr and Thomas Seymour lived together at Chelsea Manor, along with Catherine's stepdaughter Elizabeth, later who became Elizabeth I. Thomas was the uncle of Elizabeth's half-brother, and was now living in the same house as Elizabeth, but his behaviour towards her would not be acceptable. He began to act inappropriately towards a young teenage girl, in a way that was not acceptable. He even entered her bedroom in his nightclothes, and inappropriately tickled Elizabeth at times. This behaviour was reported to Catherine as being unacceptable by her governess, but Seymour later protested his innocence, with Catherine just regarding the behaviour as innocent fun. Elizabeth was later sent away, and following the birth of their own daughter, Catherine Parr began acting bizarrely, and she later died from complications from childbirth. Following her death, Thomas Seymour became incredibly wealthy, with Catherine leaving all of her possessions and wealth to him, 
but he later turned his attention again towards the younger girl Elizabeth. Thomas Seymour's biggest issue was the attitude and jealousy he had towards his brother acting as Lord Protector. Thomas tried to convince the King that he did not need a protector, but he ultimately struggled to influence Edward VI, and because of this he began to contemplate beginning a rebellion. As mentioned, war against the Scots was on the horizon, and Edward Seymour the Protector invaded Scotland in summer 1547, and left court whilst this was taking place. Thomas Seymour his brother spoke out against him at this time, and his behaviour became suspicious, and he was told to keep quiet. He had been given the title previously, the Lord High Admiral, meaning that he was in control of the English Navy, and he asked their support in case of a rebellion. He began to even liaise with pirates on the west coast, even though it was his job to keep these under control and defeat them. So he was even doing a deal with the enemy, to try and get them to help a rebellion against his brother. In 1548, it became common knowledge in court about Thomas's planned rebellion, and a meeting was called to get Thomas to explain himself. His brother was even prepared to help Thomas get out of trouble, but Thomas never showed up. For some reason on the evening of the 16th of January 1549, Thomas Seymour was caught trying to break into King Edward VI's apartments in the middle of the night. It's believed that he could have been trying to kidnap Edward and to take him into his custody. He entered through the privy garden, but woke up one of the king's dogs, and because the spaniel kept barking, he shot and killed it. The next day he was sent to the Tower of London, and it was incredibly suspect. In theory, Thomas Seymour had been caught outside Edward VI's bedroom at night with a loaded pistol, and people began to consider that he could have even been intending to assassinate King Edward. He was later interrogated, and 33 counts of treason were brought in front of Seymour, and he was found guilty of treason, and was sentenced to death. Some of the charges that were brought against him were, being charged with endeavouring to get his own hands on the government of the King, bribing members of the Privy Council, for plotting to take the King into his custody, for having 10,000 available men, and also having married the Queen scandalously, soon after the death of the King. He was sentenced to death, and brutally it was his own brother who signed his death warrant. Thomas's sister-in-law, the Duchess of Somerset, allegedly even said she would leave the Duke of Somerset if he did not act against his own brother. The act of attainder brought against Thomas Seymour said, Considering that he is a member so unnatural, unkind and corrupt, and such a heinous offender of your majesty and your laws, as he cannot be suffered to remain in body of your grace's commonwealth, but to the extreme danger of your highness, and it is too dangerous an example that such a person, so much bound and so forgetful of it, should remain among us. He was to adjudged and attained of high treason, and shall suffer such pains of death, as in cases of high treason, have been accustomed. Even until his dying moments, Thomas Seymour tried to escape his fate, trying to send Elizabeth a message sewn into a pair of velvet shoes. Towards the end he began to accept his fate, and made his peace with God, accepting his execution, and that life was coming to an end. He began to arrange his affairs, with his daughter being placed into the care of the Dowager Duchess of Suffolk in Grimsfort Castle. All his wealth would also revert back to the crown after his execution, and his daughter would be left with nothing. After being held inside the Tower of London, Thomas Seymour was taken out of the prison on the 20th of March 1549, and led towards Tower Hill. He was to be executed in front of the public on Tower Hill, in the same place that dozens of members of Tudor society would meet their same fate, such as Thomas Cromwell. As he made his way onto the scaffold, he refused to make the usual confession to the crowd. It was customary for the condemned to address the crowd, and admit their mistakes, and apologise to God, and also pray for his forgiveness. However, Thomas Seymour didn't do this. It was described by Bishop Latimer that, whether he be saved or not, I leave it to God, but surely he was a wicked man, and the realm is rid of him. So he refused to admit his crimes on the scaffold. The crowd gathered that day would have been large, and the execution would have been a rather bloody one. The executioner once Seymour's head was placed upon the block, did not execute him cleanly in one blow. It took two blows of the axe to sever his head from his body. After his execution was finished, his body was carried back into the Tower of London, where it was buried inside the Chapel St. Peter ad Vincula, inside the tower's walls, where Anne Boleyn, 
Catherine Howard and other royals were buried. The story of Thomas Seymour is one which is wrapped in jealousy and sibling rivalry. Despite his brother signing his death warrant, it wouldn't be too long before Edward Seymour would also make his way to the executioner's block on Tower Hill, the same place that Thomas was executed. His life was a rather strange one, and he was clearly a rather good military man, but overall his crime in which he may have planned to kidnap the young Edward VI is what led to his end. He seemed to be a man who was completely compelled with jealousy against his brother, and this is what caused him to meet his end at the sharp blade of an axe. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.